Okay, so it's 12 o'clock and um, I'm going to kick us off. Um, I would like to welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining our webinar today, uh, where we will be showing you a practical guide for uh, using the Autodesk Construction Cloud Solutions. Um, so today is really going to be a combination of looking at the Autodesk Construction Cloud and also some cool features that different uh, project stakeholders on projects can use. Um, with that, we're also going to show you some um, options with regards to software adoption, uh, training, uh, as well as team performance by using the multifunctional Autodesk uh, online learning platform, which is called CAD Learning. So um, on our agenda for today, we're going to start by just briefly looking at the Autodesk Construction Cloud, uh, just to explain you what, for those of you who don't know it yet, what it is and also what product off offerings there are um, and also how you can use it. Um, then we're going to start looking at the different Autodesk Construction Cloud features that uh, different stakeholders can typically use. Um, as, as examples are the ones that you see on the screen and then in conjunction with with that, um, my colleague Natalie is going to talk to you about um, CAD learning and also what, uh, and she's going to be showing you some great insight and features available um, on this platform. Then just a quick introduction of myself. My name is Annie Nota and I'm a BIM specialist uh, in, in the AEC build environment here at Baker Baines. Um, I'm also a professional architect and uh, at Baker Baines, I also do uh, Revit and BIM training and also assist companies with uh, BIM implementation. Then joining me is the very friendly and super competent uh, Natalie Barathon. Uh, who is our CAD learning guru and uh, business uh, development manager. Um, and she also has a degree in um, an honors degree in psychology. Then just a quick reminder to you, for those of you who don't know about our YouTube channel, um, this is where we share all of our webinar recordings as well as recordings to events. So uh, be sure to go and subscribe and also like our videos so that you are sure that you don't miss anything. Um, and also, if you want to have a look at past recordings or webinars, you can go and have a look at our library. Then just a quick introduction of Baker Baines and who we are and what do we do. So basically we drive digital transformation and with this we help um, our clients design and make a better world. So uh, just having a look at, um, at uh, our business model. Um, so besides us being a, an Autodesk reseller, uh, we are much more than that. Uh, so we are a niche consulting company and we thrive in, consult, uh, in, in um, solving our customers' problems uh, through offering various consulting options like you can see on the screen. So our consulting um, model is basically made up of uh, four components, which is uh, business process improvement consulting, a survey and design hardware consulting, design software consulting, and all of this is topped off with a blended learning uh, approach, which is how we believe our customers should uh, uh, and can digest information. Then just showing you a quick overview of the various uh, product and service offerings that are included with our different uh, consultings. Um, something like the scan to BIM services, for instance, is also becoming more and more popular, um, not only globally, but also um, locally as well. Then um, we're going to start this presentation with a quick overview um, of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So basically, the um, Autodesk Construction Cloud is a it's a, it's a cloud-based uh, construction management and collaboration solution, and it supports uh, workflows from design up until um, operate. So for each of these project stages, uh, from design, plan, build, and operate, uh, the ACC have different products available, uh, which I will show you in the next slide. And each of these tools um, can then be used during certain stages of a project as well as across the entire uh, project lifecycle. 
All of this is then built on a unified platform and a common data environment, which is uh, Autodesk Docs, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. And this is um, basically uh, your centralized document management um, tool that you will be using uh, right throughout your um, project's life cycle. We also like to commonly uh, uh, use the analogy of, of Dropbox, and this is like a Dropbox on steroids. So this allows you to manage documents, you can do document control, uh, you can do various um, uh, uh, mockups and approval workflows, and some of these features we are going to be having a look at shortly. And then really it empowers uh, contractors, designers, and also owners to drive better business outcomes. Then just a quick overview of the uh, different Autodesk Construction Cloud offerings and um, products that are available. Uh, if we have a look at the first one, which is Autodesk BIM Collaborate, that is basically a design collaboration tool, and it also includes uh, automated clash detection, which is really a cool feature. Uh, the second one, which is Autodesk Takeoff, that is typically a tool that estimators also make use of, and they can use it to uh, perform accurate 2D takeoffs, uh, as well as generate automated uh, quantities from 3D models. Um, and then Autodesk Build, uh, that is the one that is mainly used uh, during the construction phase of a, of a project. Uh, this is typically also where your contractors are on board, and uh, it's really a great uh, project management uh, tool to use. And then lastly at the bottom, like I've mentioned, is Autodesk Docs, which is really the foundation um, of all of this. It's, it gets included with each of these uh, products. And uh, like I said, it is your, it's your um, central document management tool. Then just quickly looking at why do we want or need the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So what you see here on the screen is an example of our co uh, conventional way of collaborating um, on Teams, which I won't really refer to as collaborate, but it's really, you can see it's a fragmented source of truth and there's also a disconnect in terms of workflows and communication. Uh, Instead of having that, we want a common data environment, which is typically Autodesk Docs or the older one, which was called BIM 360 Docs. And this really allows you to have connected workflows, um, up-to-date information, uh, project insight, as well as uh, smooth collaboration. So if we ask the question of why we want to have a, a common data environment, um, well, uh, for those of you who have heard about ISO 19650, uh, it's, a, it's a BIM standard that originated in the UK, but basically it requires project teams to have one uh, common data environment. So um, if you as a project team want to be, or even as your company want to be, or want to comply to certain BIM standards and also be on a specific BIM level, you need to have a common data environment. And um, if you make sure that your workflows aligns with the ISO 19650, it means uh, better quality management, efficiency, and also litigation management. Okay, so and then um, with the Autodesk Construction Cloud, which is what we will be talking about, is, is the, the tools that they are available. And it basically caters for all of the different consultants and disciplines that forms part of a construction team, like you can see here on the screen. Um, so all of these tools can be used during certain stages of a project, but it can also be used uh, across a project's life cycle. And with that being said, I quickly just want to hand over to Natalie just to talk us or introduce us to, um, to CAD Learning. Perfect, thank you so much. And then for that um, introduction, I am just going to share my screen and then I will go over a brief introduction of what CAD Learning is. Are you sharing your screen, Natalie? I just want to check, is my sound okay on your side? Yes, I can hear your sound. I am sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, maybe if you just switch it Perfect. to, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. So CAD Learning is um, essentially an online, um, an online Autodesk learning platform, but it's so much more than just online training. CAD Learning is, first of all, Autodesk authorized publisher. So you know the content that you're learning from CAD Learning and the lessons you're going through is authorized by, uh, by Autodesk. 
It's also a management system. You can use CAD learning for pre-hire assessments and use it for an onboarding tool. Uh, you can use it for skills gap analysis and training. Uh, you can customize an Autodesk learning path. You can use it for a reporting tool, um, for uh, Autodesk examination prep. Uh, productivity tool and then of course there is over 35,000 Autodesk tutorial lessons and um, you will have more than one product offering in fact there are 40 different Autodesk products on the CAD learning library. Now today's focus is also the launch of Construction Cloud in CAD learning. Now um, as I mentioned before CAD learning has over 40 different um, Autodesk products but um, recently the launch of uh, uh, construction cloud, which involves topics such as Autodesk Docs, Autodesk Build, and also BIM Collaborate Pro. And currently there are 232 lessons of um, construction cloud within CAD Learning. And throughout the presentation, we will show you just a little bit more of what that entails. But for now, I'm going to give back the, the um, presentation to Anin, and she will be going over our first persona for today, which is um, the architecture. So let's just give it back to Anin. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, can you see my screen? Natalie, can you maybe just confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, okay. I can. Great. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the personas like uh, Natalie has mentioned and what um, Autodesk Construction Cloud features there are. So starting off with the architect, if we had to look at some of the typical pain points that the architects experience when they need to collaborate in a team, it can be things like consultants not working off the latest drawings or documents. We all know about that issue. Um, also teams and consultants not able to view 3D building models. So especially if you've got non-Revit users or people who don't have access to a 3D uh, software, um, this is really, uh, it can become um, a problem in terms of looking at 3D models. Then also uh, difficulty to collaborate on central files remotely. We all know that this was a huge is issue, especially during our first uh, lockdown. And then also in terms of design collaboration, um, doing manual mod um, uh, model coordination processes uh, does take way longer and are bound to various uh, errors. If we had to look at the solutions that the Autodesk Construction Cloud has to offer to this uh, persona, um, we can start off with Docs and then inside of Docs, it does uh, offer you the ability to, to view files. So in other words, all of the project members who are added to a project have, uh, can view all files that are shared. Also with this comes uh, file version control, which we will look at, um, and then also various markup tools uh, that uh, consultants can use to create markups and notes on drawings. Then also uh, with BIM Collaborate Pro, uh, it uh, allows you to do Revit cloud work sharing. In other words, it's um, saving your Revit central files on the cloud, uh, allowing you for faster, smoother um, uh, workflows and also doing remote collaboration. And then also um, multidiscipline design collaboration. In other words, having everyone on board uh, and then allowing you to holistically manage uh, building design and also multidiscipline data by using um, project-based workflows in one environment. So starting off with Autodesk Docs in terms of the uh, ability to view files. So I'm going to show this to you by a quick demo. Um, so what you see here on the screen is in Autodesk Docs. This is the folder structure. So here we can see some files that have been uh, uploaded already, but you can also upload new ones. So you can do so by doing a simple drag and drop from your, from your PC. And you will see then uh, once it's done, it will say uh, published uh, has been successful. And what's also nice is what I've mentioned is the, the version tracking. So in other words, if you click 
click on the version number, you will be able to see um, a version history and you can also compare different uh, uh, versions of drawings uh, in order to see certain changes. So just to show you what that works like is here are, for instance, two um, versions or revisions of a drawing um, and then you can compare the two with each other. So this is really a nice tool uh, if you had to see what changes there have been done on a certain revision. So in, in red and blue here, yeah, you can see the two different um, versions of the drawing. Okay, and basically it also will give you a note on what exactly has been changed between that. And this is just like a comparing slider that you can use. Great, so then just another aspect of viewing files, for instance, if you wanted to, uh, or if consultants had to view a 3D model, once that 3D model like the Revit model has been shared, um, they are able to view it online. However, just note that what you're seeing here is at the moment, it's permission levels. So uh, for folders, there are um, the, the ability to, to set up certain permissions. So people that has permission to a folder are then able to view any data that has been shared. So this is just showing you what it looks like if you've uh, clicked on a Revit model, then it will take you into a 3D, uh, 3D view, uh, view of that model where you can then navigate around the model. It also has um, some nice uh, tools like measuring, um, you can pan and rotate around orbit, and you can also do things like sectional analysis, which is nice if you need to cut 3D sections through your building. Um, so you can see that you can do all sorts of things um, and this really makes it a, a great tool for, like I've said, people that doesn't have a 3D software like Revit to also be uh, have insight into the model. Then another function on, um, on Autodesk Docs is also on a drawing itself, you can also do markups or create notes. Um, so you can do this online like you can see here and you can even um, uh, publish uh, your markups and notes. In other words, if another uh, consultant or another team member uh, sees the file name, they will be able to see that there has been a markup made. So gone with the conventional methods of printing out your drawings and marking them up by hand hand and sending them back between consultants. Um, this is really a nice tool to communicate any notes and markups um, across your team. Okay, then uh, moving over to BIM Collaborate Pro and looking at design collaboration options available for the architect, which is uh, Revit Cloud Work Sharing. So basically uh, with BIM Collaborate Pro, it allows you to do Revit Cloud Work Sharing on the cloud. Um, so if so, those of you who work with central files, it works very much the same like you would do in a normal setup if you need to initiate your central file. Uh, basically, if you go to Collaborate in Revit and it asks you how do you want to collaborate, you will just you, uh, select the second option, which is in BIM 360 Document Management. Um, and this will then basically save your central file to the cloud. And by doing that, you can also publish your central model and specific views that you want to share uh, with other consultants, uh, which they can then view um, online. This is just showing you what it looks like once a Revit model has been saved to the cloud. You will also be able to see it in your Autodesk Docs environment, in your uh, specific folder structure. And um, once again, like I've mentioned, you have that uh, really cool version uh, uh, capability. So if you click on the version number, it will show you the version history. Uh, the one at the top, it shows you it's the current uh, most latest um, model. Um, and you can also have a look at past uh, versions. So no one has an excuse of saying they didn't uh, have access to the latest drawing. Okay, so apart from uh, using Revit Cloud uh, work sharing and uh, saving your central models to the cloud, a really uh, another really great tool um, is uh, of, of BIM Collaborate Pro is design collaboration. So um, how this works is um, 
it's a, a module on its own. So inside of this uh, module, um, you basically have different team spaces. So the team spaces consist of the different disciplines um, that are involved on a project. And this is essentially the collaboration space. So each team has a, what you call a swim lane. Um, and it's basically, it works on the basis of a timeline. And in on this or in this swim lane, each time that a, a consultant team share new drawings or data or any type of information or model, uh, it will reflect in their swim lane. And this is what you see uh, by looking at these nodes. So these nodes typically represent different actions uh, by the different teams, things like if they, for instance, um, published or shared a new model or drawings, that is uh, when you will see a new node that appears. And then you also have the option of, if you click on a project model, uh, you will be able to see an aggregated view or 3D view of um, um, all of the consultants uh, or disciplines models, which has been um, linked together. So um, basically what it looks like, is like you can see here, uh, and, and on the side, you will also see your different teams models. And with that, you can also start switching on and off your different teams models. Uh, and you can also color code it to differentiate between the different uh, teams models. So this is really a nice tool to help you coordinate models. And you also have the option of creating and assigning issues on the um, combined 3D model as well. Then um, I'm going to, before we continue with the next um, persona, I'm going to hand over to Natalie to take us through the uh, CAD learning bot uh, on architects. Perfect, thank you so much, Anu. So here we go. Perfect. So um, just to follow on what Anin has said about the pain points of uh, architects. Um, some Natalie, more pain points. Yes. Can I just want to see there? that your share. Yeah, if you can just maybe let's see. There we go. She, is it sharing now? Perfect. Great. Perfect. So um, like I said, just to build on the pain points that Anin was mentioning. Uh, when it comes to training. Uh, training is a very, very important thing, but sometimes it's not a priority in some organizations um, because one of the things, um, training can sometimes be disruptive, it can disrupt projects. You know, Sometimes we don't have the time or capacity to take team members off site for uh, you know, a couple of days to a week for training. And unfortunately, not making training a priority does lead to um, teams falling behind in, in latest versions of software and being project ready and future ready. And then that also impacts your client's expectations or your project delivery because your clients are expecting the, the foster better results and they will go with the organization that's going to deliver them those results. So basically you need to make sure that your training is a priority. Um, and I just want to show you in CAD learning just to touch on um, some things uh, Anin mentioned specifically to um, architectural persona and the construction cloud. So if we go into the, the um, CAD learning library, as I mentioned before, we have over 40 different products. But if we go specifically into construction cloud, you will see that um, these construction cloud available with all of the different topics that I mentioned. But specifically, um, I want to have a look at the um, understanding file versions. Uh, there we go. So you can see you can uh, in your filter option you can search directed search for something specific that you are looking for. Once you click on the lesson um, it will open up. It will play like a normal video where it will have an option to pause, jump back, jump forward, um, to go faster, to go slower, to you know make it full screen, the lesson full screen. But also what uh, sets CAD learning apart from other normal uh, videos is that it has the uh, transcript at the bottom. So if you want a specific consent, example, uh, click copy, you can just click on that whatever you're looking for and the video will jump to that part in the lesson. And you can also see on the right hand side here, it will show you what lesson you're viewing under what topic. And if you go up and down, you can see more associated lessons to the topic under construction cloud. Um, so now at this point, I just want to go into a little bit of um, solution based 
uh, in terms of CAD learning, specifically to do more with um, creating a, a gap training content and also um, focusing on customizing your own content. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes uh, training is not a priority in organizations, but that has a negative impact on your overall RRI and project delivery if you do not focus on training. So the one thing, I, as I mentioned, I want to show you that there is the capability of doing gap training. So in the instance when um, maybe you're in a scenario, your team is um, uh, proficient on a, a version of a software, but it's an old version, a 2018 version of a software, and you get a new project coming in within the next couple of um, months and you need to be proficient in the latest version, you need to get your team up to date with that. So you can create um, gap training for them. <clears throat> so basically you can create a playlist that will help your team get up to speed on the latest version. You can just name name the, the playlist. You can add all of the users in your organization that you want to send this playlist to. And then of course the content, which is the most important thing. So let's say for example, um, you want, let's just pick um, AutoCAD for example, and you want to go from a older version to the latest version of 2022, you can generate the content. And ideally now the content that's gonna be generated is everything from version 2020 to version 2022. So ideally if your team goes through all of these lessons, they will be proficient in the latest version. But let's say they don't need to go through all of this. We want to eliminate redundant learning. You can customize your playlist. And let's say you, you, you know for a fact that there are some concepts that your team already knows. You can delete certain lessons from the playlist. You can also prioritize certain lessons in the playlist. So if you want them to get, you know, understand something before they move on to another concept, you can just prioritize the lessons as, as you like. And then that is how you make sure that your team is up to date on the latest version and therefore they are project ready. Um, and then we'll meet your client's expectations. But we can also have the opportunity of creating your own custom courseware and your own training material. So um, as we go through the session today, you'll notice that we, uh, CAD Learning will have available a lot of stock assessments that um, your users can take, but you can also um, stock assessments and stock lessons, but you can also place all of the lessons into one tile um, that you can have your own training, your unique training, learning paths set into one tile. And the other thing that you can do is that um, you, if you have external, especially with the custom courses, you can create um, your own uh, 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 links. If you have internal videos or internal ma training material, you can load it to CAD Learning so that you have one source of training and one um, uh, place where your whole organization goes to train, just to make sure that training is kept up to date and made a priority. Perfect. So now we're going to move on to the next persona, which is consultants. So I'm going to hand back to Anin, and she is going to take you through the first bit of consultants. There we go. Great. Okay. Thanks, Nat. Okay, so um, looking at consultants, um, if we had to look at what are typical pain points when consultants need to collaborate in a team, these are things like delayed responses and bottlenecks in communication, um, disconnected workflows, manual module, uh, model coordination processes, and also detecting design clashes between um, models. So if we had to look at the Autodesk Construction Cloud solutions available for these um, within Autodesk Docs, there are certain, uh, there's, there's a review tool that you can use and that includes uh, different approval workflows, which we will also have a look at uh, soon. And then uh, you've got inside of Autodesk BIM Collaborate, which is very similar to a BIM Collaborate Pro uh, in the sense that it, in, um, it also includes much of the same features except for the Revit cloud work sharing option. And uh, with BIM Collaborate, you can then uh, do model coordination and also proper clash detection. So we're going to start uh, with Autodesk Docs in terms of looking at the reviews tool. 
So uh, also I'm just going to show this with a demo. So basically in Autodesk Docs, you will see that there's a review tool and um, this is where you will start if you want to initiate or um, submit documents that needs to be reviewed. So basically how the review process works is, is if there's any documentation or drawings that needs to be approved by or between consultants, you can put those documents through a, um, a review process. And um, it's basically, it's based on a, a, a uh, approval workflow that you set up beforehand and um, then when you start or submit the review um, it will ask you to give a review name there you can see all of the documents that are included uh, within this review and then you can also add a note so if you are sending this off to um, other consultants you can add a message and then it will also also ask you to whom you want to send an email notification so this is great. So the moment you uh, submit these documents, those um, reviewers receive an email notification. So just continuing with the whole process um, of reviewing um, a, a review once it has been submitted. So this is just what the email looks like. And that person will click on the email link and it will take them to the, to the different files that the other consultant has shared with them. Once you then um, are ready to start the review, you will click on start review, and then uh, you will then basically start looking at each document and going through that. So like I've shown you before, uh, once again, you can view all of your files online. Okay, so just going through each of these documents. So for instance, a new revision has been shared and you want to pass it on or have, for instance, the um, structural engineer have a look at that. Uh, you can pass that uh, through this approval workflow. And basically um, what you will see next is that you also have uh, approval statuses that you can use to either approve or re reject a, a drawing. Okay, so say for instance, this drawing was rejected, you can then uh, change the approval status to that and you can also add a comment, uh, which the other consultant will, will then be able to see. So in this way, you can see that it's really an effective way of um, collaborating between uh, consultants and also uh, communicating and also all of your communication and documentation is in one place. So um, once uh, your uh, final review process has been done, you will do your final approval. Um, and then upon completing the final approval, it will basically just close the review process. Okay, then moving on to Autodesk BIM Collaborate and the second tool uh, that consultants can use to get past the issue of model coordination. Um, and we are going to, I'm going to show you an example of how you can typically do model coordination and, and also uh, run clash detections. So basically um, model coordination is also another module uh, inside of or on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And then inside of this mod module, you can view models that have been uploaded to the cloud. So if you go to view mode, which is what you see at the moment, you can select uh, models from your coordination spaces uh, that you want to use in model coordination. So by doing so, you can also create different saved views um, of a selected group of models. And this is especially helpful when you're working with uh, subsets of a given pro uh, project. So this is just how it looks like when you start saving different views. And then, uh, you will then, uh, these um, models will then automatically be clash, de uh, clash checked against each other. So you can also see the number of active clashes between any two models, which was in the previous um, matrix. And you can also start with a clash assigning it as either an issue or as not an issue. Um, so just continuing from the, the previous slide, uh, if there were, for instance, a, a clash that was an issue, you can mark it as such. This, this example is just um, uh, not an issue, so it doesn't require any further attention. But if there are an issue, you can then go, you can zoom into that clash 
and you can create um, an issue by just dropping a, an issue pin. Uh, it will then ask you to give certain details of the issue. You can also address it to a specific person who needs to um, address this issue. And you can also add further details such as due dates um, and so forth. So basically, once that issue has been created, inside of the build module, you can go uh, into issues and you can see an overview of all of the issues that were created. This example is the clash that we've just seen. And when th that clash uh, has, been uh, has been identified and the issue created, you can also see like a, a snapshot with that. And it's also easy with any issue to easily change the status either to uh, in review or, or closed. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to hand back to Natalie just to talk us through the rest of CAD learning again. Thank you, Anil. Perfect. All right, so um, we're going to carry on with the consultant and the, the pain points of the consultant. So um, first of all, when it comes to managing teams, uh, there can be some difficulties, whether it's um, on-site or remote. Um, first of all, the lack of um, engagement that you have with your team one-on-one. -on -one. You know, sometimes when projects are in full swing and you don't really have time to track KPAs, whether the team is in the office or um, remotely working, sometimes that can um, be an issue. And then also, of course, when it comes to managing projects, um, you know, when is, uh, how do you find the correct um, candidate or the team member for, for the, the job available or the, the project that, ahead? And then, of course, what is the impact? You know, there is gonna be that negative impact if you do uh, select the wrong team member for the project and that will have a negative impact on your project delivery and your overall R ROI. So if we have a look, um, if we go into CAD learning and we have a look, I just want to touch base on creating approval workflows for docs under construction cloud in CAD learning. So again, as you can see, the lesson is opening up and um, the same concept will apply as before. Um, just once it loads that the, the lesson will play. And uh, the one thing that I do want to mention is that these lessons are designed to be micro learning lessons. So you'll notice that the lessons will be sometimes three minutes to six minutes long. So it's, it's really not that a lengthy um, lesson that you have to go through. And again, um, you'll see that there is the transcript available and the other lesson suggestions. But in terms of um, uh, uh, when it comes to consultants and how CAD learning can help you with your day-to-day -day functioning, it's specifically the reporting capabilities and managing your overall team. So especially on the enterprise level of CAD learning, you have reporting capabilities where you can set reports and download reports um, to monitor your team performance and engagement. There's anything from assessment reports, to um, lesson activity, product activity, you know, what products are being uh, used the most on the platform and uh, who's most engaged and least engaged and overall user activity. Um, what's nice about the reporting capability on CAD learning is you can schedule a report delivery to be sent to your email um, and you can have a look at just the overview of what's happening in, uh, with all of your end users, your team members. Um, and then there's also the option of downloading the report. Um, if you go to download activity, you can uh, easily download this report into an Excel document. It will give you all of the information on the platform. You can put that information into a pivot table and basically use it for all of your um, reporting capabilities when it comes to those KPA reviews and managing your team and making sure that you are developing them, upskilling them, onboarding them correctly. Um, and all of that. Now let's just say, for example, uh, you don't necessarily have time at the moment to pull a lengthy report and uh, you know, do an, a full depth analyst on, on all of the reports. There is the organizational dashboard that you can quickly go and conveniently go look at. So this would be if you quickly want to just check who are the rock stars in your team, um, who's the, what's the skill gap like, what are the engagement trends, who's improving, who's struggling, 
um, who's most engaged, and then of course, who's least engaged. So this can tell you maybe there's some members in your team that are struggling and least engaged that you need to prioritize engagement with, and maybe you can um, praise some, some team members that are improving and who are the rock stars and most engaged. So as you can see, you can use this as this is a user-friendly, multi-level management tool when it comes to reporting. Now I'm going to uh, give it back to Anin. She's going to go through the next uh, persona that we have on our list, which is project managers. So I'm going to give it back to her. Great. There we go. Cool. So let's have a look at um, project managers. So if we had to uh, talk about some pain points that project managers typically experience when they need to collaborate in a team, um, so examples are uh, things like managing information requests from the contractor, we all know about that, uh, also between consultants, and then also effectively dealing with project issues. So within Autodesk Construction Cloud, once again, there are um, obviously different solutions available. And within Autodesk Build, uh, what we're going to talk about is the RFI tool and also the issues tool. So with, the, with both of these tools, basically teams can create, manage and track RFIs um, and issues on projects. So if we had to have a look at how the project manager can typically make use of the um, RFI tool, um, it's, it's good to just uh, start with where does a, an RFI typically uh, uh, originate. So basically it starts with the subcontractor or a supplier or a main contractor who needs information from a project consultant. And we always say that the RFI tool in Autodesk Build is only to be used by contractors or these three people that you see on the screen. Um, so basically, if uh, for the project manager to use this tool, they can be set up or assigned as the RFI manager. So how it works is that the, the contracting party will create a, an RFI or a request for information and he will, or, uh, they will assign it to the project manager. The project manager will then review and validate the RFI. Uh, in, in other words, is it valid or not? And if he's happy with that, he can then submit it uh, to the relevant consultant. Um, that consultant will then review and respond to the, uh, the RFI. So just uh, to show you quickly what it looks like if you uh, create and respond to an RFI. So like I've said, is this, uh, this tool is found in the build module um, and you will see the RFIs tool and then you will click on uh, create RFI. So this is basically now the contractor who initiates the request for information. Uh, there are also different status options like you see. Uh, so when he passes it or submits it to the RFI manager, who is the project manager in this case, uh, he will choose that first option and then he will uh, fill out the rest of the details. So just to show you that ball in court, that is basically the person who it gets assigned to, um, in other words, the, the project manager. And then you can also go on and add further details, such as when is the due date, by when he needs a response. Um, he can also add uh, if there's specific locations to the building, uh, um, he can add that. His question will be basically, what is he requesting? And you also have options to add references um, if necessary. Also very cool is that you can specify whether th this request for information has a time or a schedule impact, and you can also assign it to a specific discipline, in this case, the architect. You can also uh, assign a specific category. In other words, this is documentation incomplete. He needs the specifications for the waterproofing. And um, you can also insert the originator, in, in this case, uh, Bob the Builder or the contractor. You can also uh, include watchers who are basically people that you want to uh, copy into this um, review process. So what you see here is once the RFI has been created and we can see it's waiting for submission. So basically it's now assigned to the project manager and the ball is now in the, the court of the project manager. 
And from this uh, view, you can see that you can see things like the activity log. In other words, you can see exactly where the RFI is in the process of reviewing and so on. Um, this is just showing you what it looks like when uh, the project manager receives uh, an email of a, an RFI that has been created, and then he can click a link which will take him to that specific RFI. We can see here, this is now in the account of the project manager. The project manager can also go and uh, type in or add a specific uh, reference number for this RFI, and um, then he or she can then review uh, all of the information and exactly what is this question about. If there's a suggested answer, uh, you can also insert that. Okay, and you can also once again see a due dates, um, what impacts this has, and any additional information, and you can add references once more. So once the project manager is happy with the RFI, he will then go and submit it to the reviewer, in other words, the relevant consultant. In this case, it's, get, it's uh, being submitted to the architect who needs to review this request for information. Okay, so we can see it once it has been created, it will appear in this RFI log. Then um, the, the architect will then also once again receive an email notification and then click the link and he will then start the review. So here you can see the question that is being asked. He's asked for a waterproofing specification and now he can respond accordingly. So from here he can, for instance, if he has added or uploaded the uh, the specifications or the waterproofing details, he can go and add a reference to that and then he can submit his official response. So basically he will then say, um, he will answer back on, on this question. So yeah, he's notifying the, um, the contractor that this drawing or specifications has been uploaded to a specific folder. Okay, so if we submit that, we can now see that it has been answered and now it, get, it goes back to the project manager who can then review the official response and then close out the RFI. So this is once again what the email notification looks like and then um, the project manager will open that RFI and um, he can see everything has been done, it has been reviewed, he's happy, and then he can um, either, um, yeah, he can close and distribute it if he's, if he's satisf satisfied, but he can also even return it to the reviewer if the answer wasn't uh, satisfactory. So by closing and distributing the RFI, uh, it will notify the contractor um, that the um, necessary action was taken. In other words, the, the specs has been uploaded and an answer has been provided. So really a nice way of keep, keeping everyone in the loop and um, exactly being able to see what happens when on a review and who has responded. Then just quickly uh, looking at issues, um, also how you create and respond to them. So um, here we are in the build module. This is just an overview of the issues tool. You can see different things. And if you wanted to create a new issue or um, uh, highlight a specific problem on, on a certain part of the project, uh, you can do so both in the design phase and in this case um, during construction. And then you also have different status options. So one once you start an issue, it will be open, and then there are also different types of issues that you can create. In this case, this is a, an issue um, of the um, regarding the program, and um, this issue is that the the um, uh, construction pro uh, program has not yet been uh, issued or circulated to the team. And so here we can see that this issue is created by the project manager and he is sending it or assigning it to the contractor to, um, to uh, who needs to respond um, uh, by a certain date.
So once the issue has been created, you can once again see the different details of that issue and you can also um, modify it if necessary. And you can also add um, comments if, if needed. And also, once again, a nice feature is that you can see an activity log. So just this is just showing you what it looks like when an email is sent out uh, to the relevant uh, person and he can then go and review this specific issue. And also with um, your activity log, you can even add comment um, um, someone. So in other words, that will then um, address this comment to a specific person. Okay, and that's just also showing you that the status of this issue is being changed. In other words, um, it's being reviewed. And so it, and um, yeah, just showing you what it looks like when this person, for instance, who is the contractor, he has um, uploaded the, um, the program and now he sends a transmittal to, to the rest of the team to notify them of the upload. And with a transmittal, which is like a formal notification with email, you can also add a message. Okay, so once the transmittal has been created, the contractor has um, uploaded his outstanding program. He can once again go and add another comment if you want. This comment is specifically addressed to the project manager. Um, he's telling them or her that the, the um, documents has been added. He can also add a reference. Uh, so this is just uh, grabbing or attaching that specific uh, program. You can add that file and um, he can then submit this comment. And then once uh, this is done, the status of this issue can once again be changed and um, it can be changed to uh, answered or um, closed. So the um, project manager by having a look at the activity log can now go and close out this issue. Okay, so I'm going to hand over back to, to Natalie to take us through CAD learning again. Thank you so much, Anim. Perfect. So to build again on um, what Anim was saying about the pain points of project managers. So when it comes to appointing the right, uh, you know, person for a specific project from your team, whether it's an external appointment or external appointment, um, first of all, there is a, a skill shortage in the industry. So the pool of people that you're looking for is smaller and therefore it becomes more difficult. Um, of course, uh, you need to get the right uh, candidate for the position or for the, the project. Um, and that has a, if you, if you, uh, get the incorrect person, it will have an impact on that project delivery. And then, of course, when it comes to onboarding, um, when you do then uh, find and appoint the correct person, how do you get them up to speed with um, what they need to know? And you don't want to waste time onboarding and uh, teaching them as something that they already know or teaching them something that they do not need to know in, in terms to get through the project. So um, to go back to a little bit of what Anim was uh, talking about with uh, understanding issues in setting under construction cloud, we're just going to go under that uh, to, uh, lesson tutorial lesson. And again, as you can see, the lesson will pop up and everything that I did discuss before um, as it will play. And pretty the same concept in standard throughout all of the lessons, um, which is quite nice and standardized. Um, and then if we have a look in terms of contractors, I also just want to highlight the functionality of creating assessments. So to go back to the issue of making sure that you uh, appoint the correct uh, person or, or team member, 
whether it's internally or externally for your current project is very important. So we advise to use our assessment functionality on the system. Um, one thing that you will notice is that we do have stock assessments available. So you can assign a stock assessment already built into the library to a user, or you can create your own assessment from scratch. Um, and uh, there's different types of assessments to create or to focus on here. You get overall skill, pre-hire and gap assessments. Um, uh, basically, the pre-hire assessments is an assessment that you can send to an external user of CAD Learning. They do not need to have a seat or login details in order to take that assessment. And that works out handy if, say, for instance, you don't find the right uh, a person or persona in your organization for the project coming up, you can send them a pre-hire assessment to see, you know, where their knowledge stands and how, how they, the way, uh, what they actually know. So after you have, let's say, for example, you want to create um, an assessment, uh, you can go further and customize the assessment. Um, uh, let's say we call it gap training again. Uh, you can customize the assessment, uh, you can make a description uh, detailing what the assessment will entail, and then of course during courses um, you can go ahead and choose different products uh, that you want the, the persona to focus on, specifically maybe you, know, you want to look at uh, appointing a BIM manager to your project then you will go and look for all of the products associated with that role of the manager in your organization. And once you've done that, you can go and add questions from our stock assessments. You can go add and select questions from our stock assessments, or you can add new questions where you can literally customize and start from scratch and add the answers over here. Now, once you have for example, sent an, an assessment to an internal or a, uh, an internal user, um, and you want to get the results, you will just search for that user. Um, for example, I'm going to search for Neuron and look at her assessment results. I want to have a look at her transcript. Just give me a second. Um, basically, you can have a look at her transcript and there. From there, you can see her results and then see how proficient she is in the in the specific product. All right, and then the other thing that that's useful for, now let's say that you get the, the results back and you find, okay, Neuron has got 70% for the specific um, assessment, so I want to go ahead and appoint Neuron to the project. So therefore, you can go and uh, create a role for Neuron. So let's stick to the role of the manager. Um, what that means is you will specifically allocate uh, goals and uh, specifically allocate learning paths and goals to her so that she knows what to train on and focus on to get through her role. Um, the, you can choose from our stock goals, uh, add goal here. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of different goals that you can select from. Um, under that role, and then also products, you can add certain products and versions under that, that role. So ideally, once you've created um, a role for, for a user, then you can assign that role to that user, and then once that user logs onto CAD Learning on their side, they will be uh, notified that a, a role has been associated with them, and they have a specific learning path that they need to go through. All right. So um, at this point, we are going to move on to um, contractors. So I'm going to give it back to Anine. Awesome. Okay, so um, looking at the contractors and typically what are their uh, pain points when they need to collaborate in a team, um, it can be things like completing, reviewing and man managing project forms. So things like um, site daily logs, um, safety checks, um, all those type of things, even snack lists uh, is sometimes an issue. Um, and then also approval of construction documents, drawings or data. Um, and also once again, contractors ability to view files. So if we had to look at the Autodesk Construction Cloud solutions available to the contractor, um, there's a forms tool and a submittals tool that we are going to talk about. So with the forms tool, um, which is in Autodesk Build, this basically allows a uh, contractors specifically, but other consultants as well, to fill out, review and manage any type of project form. 
Um, so forms can also be completed on site, uh, which is really nice. So with Autodesk Build, uh, it's, uh, there's also a mobile app called Plan Grid that is um, included. So this allows contractors on site um, to be able to complete forms on their mobile device. Um, or then forms can also be completed um, on the web or at the office. And then with forms, it really gives your team a single secure point of reference and also a way to coordinate data collection, um, photos and any type of follow up documents. So, um, like I've mentioned, a nice way of using forms, for instance, um, is also snag lists. So you can set up or compile your own type of form and then it can be completed online and everyone uh, have access to that data. Then the other tool which I mentioned was the submittals tool. So basically submittals, it's, it's a, a tool that is used when any type of um, construction documents needs to be approved. Like I've mentioned, shop drawings, uh, product samples, product data, any type of specification. Then a contractor can go and create a submittal for that. And he can then uh, assign that uh, either to the submittal manager who can be like the, the, the project manager once again, or to um, directly to the to the relevant consultant, who then needs to review it and approve it accordingly. Um, so just to show you a quick example of how a submittal is created, uh, like I said, it's in the build module, and basically um, the the so what we see is all of the different information um, in terms of submittals that we can see. Uh, but before I show you how to start it, uh, just note that for submittals there are certain permissions that uh, is typically set up by the project admin. So um, what, um, first, people who are uh, typically um, enabled to create submittals will be any type of contractors like we've seen with the RFIs um, as well. And then you can also uh, set certain default values. You can give a particular review time. Uh, watches is people who are copied into the review. And you also have the ability to set uh, specific approval statuses or responses um, as needed. You also can set different types of submittals, like I've said, product data, reports, samples, schedules, shop drawings, um, and so on. So then if someone um, wants to then start uh, creating a submittal, uh, they will um, go to the submittals tool and basically um, how it works is it based on um, spec sections. So if you go to create item, you will need to select a spec section. So basically it's a category of a finish. Um, this can also be uh, created beforehand. Uh, you will give it a title. Uh, in this case, it's the um, the external window and storefront shop drawings that needs to be approved. And uh, the person creating the submittal can also add a description for that. So these uh, drawings need to be approved by the architect. Okay, you will then assign a specific type. So this is uh, shop drawings, and then you assign it to the uh, responsible person. Can you can also then give it a, a priority level. Um, in this case, it's high. And then you can add your drawings or your attachments. Um, so once you add that, the moment that the person receives this uh, submittal, they will be able to see the, the documents or the drawings that has been uh, submitted. Then you can also add more details like um, by when is the response required? When is uh, installation going to happen on site? Is there a specific lead time and, and so forth? So um, once again, once the, the submittal has been created, it looks very similar to the RFIs. The person who, is, who it's assigned to can then go and review all of the details. He or she can see um, the, the attachments or drawings that was included, and then um, they can then submit it. So this is now um, submitting it to the manager. In other words, the contractor is now sending it off to the relevant um, manager, who, like I've said, can be the project manager, uh, who will then once again circulate it to the responsible consultant. So this, with submitting it, uh, you can also include uh, a note once again.
Okay, so now if the contractor is ready to pass it on, or, or if the project manager is ready to pass it on to the relevant consultant, uh, in this case the architect, he will then submit it to the, to the reviewer. And he can also then include uh, a message or a note with that. So in this case, he's asking the architect to please review the uh, shop drawings and the windows um, uh, as soon as possible. And watches are basically people copied into the review. Okay, so the person that gets assigned to once again receives an email and he can then uh, go and view the item. So this is now the architect. He can open the submittal, he can review everything, um, he can see all of the details and then respond accordingly. Okay, so with that being said, I'm just going to hand back to Natalie again uh, to continue with CAD learning. Thank you, I mean. Let's Perfect. just see quickly. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so to build on to, again, the um, contractor's pain points, um, when it becomes a lack of shared knowledge and the impact of that in an organization um, is it takes away productivity. So if you have one Autodesk user, um, if you have 10 Autodesk users and one asks another for help, then you have 20% of your team basically offline and not billable anymore. Um, and then also when it comes to support, if there's a lack of support in your organization, finding the uh, create content or the correct content rather to, to get through the project can be time consuming and frustrating. And then of course, uh, when it comes to the, the support teams, answering redundant questions also becomes um, frustrating and also has an impact on your productivity. So when it comes to um, CAD learning, you can, uh, improve productivity when it comes to shared knowledge and also um, making sure that certain uh, uh, team members have access to the correct and the right support. So you are able to go and create playlists. For example, if you go um, to uh, CAD learning, uh, in CAD learning, you go to Construction Cloud. Um, for example, if you go into any of the tiles, um, for example, let's use Revit for this one. Uh, if you go into the tile and you can create certain playlists in order for you to send it to your team so that they can search and get that information. All you need to do is you can use the filter option if you are looking for something specific. But for example, if it's uh, uh, sketch tools in this case, you can go um, add it to a playlist. And then once you've added it to a playlist, it will pop here on your flyaway. Um, at, at the, the right hand side, you can create playlists. Um, again, let's use the gap training as an example. Uh, and what's great about the playlist is that you can go ahead and use it for other functions. For example, sharing in your organization. So um, if you have a colleague that is on the same project as you and needs the same information, you can go ahead and share this playlist with them, add their email over there, send it to them. And once they log on to CAD Learning on their side, they'll see that they have a new playlist. And then, of course, you can go ahead and assess yourself. Um, uh, again, I would suggest that everyone, uh, every, every user assesses themselves, whether they are new or expert, because the AI machinery will take your results and eliminate um, the, what you already know from your learning path. So again, we can re eliminate that redundant learning. You do not want to focus on uh, something that you will waste time on something that you already know. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just going to randomly uh, go through the multiple choice question over here. And that's how you go through an assessment. Um, you can also see here, you can save and exit, which means that you don't have to go through the assessment all at once. The platform is specifically built for uh, uh, users that only have about 20 minutes a day to train. And uh, on that note, I'm going to send it back to uh, Anim so we can take you through the last persona, which is Perfect, Anin, are you there? 
sorry, I was on mute. Uh, apologies for that. So looking at the last uh, persona, which is the operators and owners, and what are their typical pain points that they experience when they need to collaborate with other consultants on a project? Um, it can be things like uh, having project insight and overview, um, also uh, having like insight on a type of dashboard where they can see exactly what's going on on a project, uh, um, by, uh, by who, what's happening when, uh, and so forth. And then also the ability to view files and have audit trails um, available. Another thing is also permission settings. In other words, to secure certain data uh, and uh, keep information in the right hands. If we had to have a look at the solutions that they are available uh, for owners and operators uh, inside of Autodesk Docs, we've got the insights tool as well as different permission settings that you can set up for, um, for folders and also uh, um, member access, which we will look at shortly. So just a quick overview of the insight dashboard so uh, this comes included with your Autodesk Docs license and um, so basically inside is like a dashboard um, of your entire project and you can also configure it in the way uh, which you would like to display information so you've got a customized option where you can go and um, include certain cards so if you for instance wanted to include information about issues or uh, design trends or reviews um, or any type of activity that, that's happening on the project, you can just click the, that and it will include that card on your dashboard. So if the uh, owner or operator looks at this dashboard at a glance, they can see exactly what's happening um, on, on different parts of the project. Can you, and, and this dashboard can also show you other um, specific product uh, or project data um, in, inside of uh, design features, uh, risks, project controls, quality, safety, as well as issues. And then at the bottom, you can see that there's also a reports uh, a tool. So if reports were issued or created on a project, by clicking on reports, you can then um, have an overview of all of the reports that were um, uh, published. Then uh, just in terms of permissions, so I've shown it to you before as well, but basically uh, in your folder structure where you upload all of your drawings and documents and files, you can assign certain permission levels. So this helps to control access to files and all types of actions people can take on files. Even things like who can uh, uh, do mockups, who can edit documents, who can download it, who can view it uh, and so forth. And this action of setting up the uh, folder permissions is typically done by project administrators. Okay, so uh, basically when you go to permissions, you will then add people who have access or is able to, to see or view um, information that is in a, a specific folder. Just a quick overview of the uh, permission levels that you typically have. You've got permission levels like view, create, edit and manage. And then inside of each of these, uh, you've got more options. So view only, for instance, people can only view files and add private markups and create issues, but it's not necessarily um, uh, visible to other uh, consultants. Then you've got more options of creating. In other words, you can start downloading files and publish markups. In other words, makes it, make it um, viewable to other consultants as well. Uh, you also have upload uh, permissions if you have, uh, uh, if your permission level is create. And then you've got more, like you can see edits, where you can perform edits on files. And then the last one, which is manage, is if you've got full administrative controls on a folder, which means you can actually do anything um, on a folder and you uh, will also perform uh, any type of administrative actions um, on uh, folders and files. Um, and just note that project administrators have managed permissions by default. So they are the ones, if you are assigned as a project administrator, you have uh, a full control of all types of uh, folders that are created. 
Then just the last thing uh, in terms of member access to an account or a project. So if you start adding members to an account, uh, you can also assign their access levels. So they can either be an account administrator, a project administrator, uh, and also um, they can be on an executive level, um, depending on what their role is on the project. Um, and then you can also say, for instance, uh, the project is completed and you no longer want uh, or a member needs to be removed from a project. Say, for instance, the, the project is at handover stage. It's very easy. You can simply go and remove a member um, from a project and they will no longer have access to any uh, data on that project. With that being said, I'm going to hand back to Natalie to close us out, um, out for the afternoon and just talk to us about the last portion. Thank you so much, Ani. Now, let me just sharing my screen. Perfect. All right, so just to focus also just on the pain points when, uh, when it comes to owners and operators is um, adoption and investing all of this money onto this kind of software but then the team members aren't adopting it correctly that's why you need you know a multifunctional system that um, can focus on the full employee life cycle and then um, of course um, when it comes to BIM projects and BIM deliverables um, owners want BIM projects and deliverables and teams that need to know the BIM software and of course CAD learning can give you um, most of the BIM software capabilities and CAD learning is a multifunctional tool that will help you with that full employee life cycle whether it is hiring a new candidate onboarding a new hire um, upskilling current employees and then of course um, um, retaining also that so um, as we go into the end here, I know that we're a little bit out of time, but is there any questions at this point? Just want to have a look. I've already answered two uh, separately. I don't see any new uh, questions. Let's just Perfect. see if we can. All right. Oh, I see there's just one question here about CAD learning. Can one user use one, uh, uh, multiple users use one seat? No, it is a single sign-on option for CAD learning. So um, that would mean that you definitely, one user should be allocated to one seat and not share a seat. And that's because of that unique learning path. Everyone's unique learning path is different. Um, okay, I don't see any more questions. So I think if um, there's no other questions. Uh, please do remember that you can reach out to us if you have any questions or if you want to follow up about CAD learning, please reach out to us uh, or anything about Construction Cloud, of course. Uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. We really appreciate it. We really hope that you found it insightful um, and please have a great day further.